Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing Cayley's Theorem. Okay, so we've now discussed what Cayley's Theorem actually says. So Cayley's Theorem says that if you have any group, okay, so a set of symbols with a group composition law defined on it, then you can absolutely always think of the symbols within the group as representing set permutations of a set, and this set is going to be a copy of the set of symbols of the group. So you duplicate this set, okay, and here we have now a set, so it's no longer got the composition law associated with it. And each of the elements of the group can be associated with a, a set permutation of this set of symbols that is the same as the set of symbols of the group. And quite simply, if you take any little a as an element of big G, you can associate it with the set permutation which maps every little g in this set, basically, onto uh, that element of the set left multiplied by a, basically, and we've discussed that this actually is a bijective map, so it is a set permutation, basically. Okay, so that means that every element of the group can be associated with a set permutation of this set of symbols, which is the set of symbols of the group itself. Okay, now what's incredible about this is that the composition law that you would get if you defined composition of the set of symbols of the group by uh, the composition of the set permutations that I've just defined for them is exactly the same as the composition law that you would get. Uh, well, it's exactly the same as the composition law that the group originally had, basically. Okay, and we showed that here. We showed that if you have any two elements, little a and little b is an element of the group, then the answer to what those two compose together is, in our original composition table, is a composed with b. We want to show that the set permutation associated with that is exactly the same as the set permutation that you would get by composing together the set permutation of B with the set permutation of A. So you do B first and then do A, and indeed we have shown that the set permutations there are exactly equal to one another. Okay, so the set permutation of A composed with B truly is the same as the set permutation of B then composed with the set permutation of A. Okay, so this really does um, it does express the composition of these set permutations which we defined. Now, what's the purpose of this final video then? Okay, well the purpose of this final video is to explore why we can't use right multiplication to do this as well. Okay, so we have defined every symbol in the group to represent the set permutation which is carrying every element of the set to that element left multiplied by a. Why could we not do this another way? Why could we not uh, do it like so? We could define uh, the set permutation associated with the element little a as an element of the group to carry all elements of this set onto the element right multiplied by a. We know that that is also a bijective map because we know that all of the columns of the group composition table contain every element of the group once and only once. Okay, so that means that this too is a bijective map. Okay, so indeed this is a way of defining set permutations basically. So you could you could associate every element of the group here with this set permutation. Okay, these are perfectly valid set permutations to associate with the elements of the group. The problem then comes with this second part. The problem comes with saying that this composition law here is the same as the composition law that we would get if we uh, compose the set permutations together. So let's see where this argument fails this time. So once again, we'll take an arbitrary element, uh, arbitrary two little elements A and B, and what we would like to show is that A composed with B of G, so the set permutation associated with A composed with B in the original group composition table, is equal to a of b of g. Okay, and we'd like to show that again for all little a and b is an element of g. And if we did show that, then once again we'd show that the composition law on our original group really does represent the composition of these set permutations. Okay, so where is this going to fail? Well, once again, let's just stick in the definition. So let's do the left-hand side. So using the definition here, this will be g composed with a composed with b. Okay, using 
the definition on the right hand side now, what will we get? We'll get, oh, and I should have put a question mark there because we don't know whether this is true yet and it's not going to actually be true. Okay, so if we um, now do the, um, just apply our definition onto this side, so b of g will of course equal uh, g composed with b, okay, and then a of g of b will then equal g composed with b composed with a. Okay, now you'll realise that there's a problem here, okay, because we've actually swapped round the order of a and b. So we can still apply associativity here. We can still say, of course, that this is exactly the same as g composed with b composed with a, but we've still got a problem here because b composed with a is not necessarily equal to a composed with b. Okay, so it's no longer true that these two are necessarily equal to each other. Okay, for them to be equal to one another, what's the condition that we need? We need a composed with b to equal b composed with a for all a and b is an element of the group because we needed this to be true for all elements a and b of the group and therefore we'd need this to equal this for all elements of the group. Okay, so we'd need the group to be abelian basically, we'd need the composition law to be commutative, but then if the composition law is commutative, you'll notice something. This all becomes pointless in the first place, because if the composition law is commutative, I can just rewrite this as A composed with G. So the set permutation that I would be associating every element of the group with is exactly the same as the set permutation that I get from left multiplication anyway. Okay, so I'm not even exploring anything new at all if the group is abelian. So if the group is abelian, there's absolutely no point on looking at this uh, set permutation which you can define from right multiplication because it's exactly the same as the one that you get from left multiplication. If it's not abelian, then although this perfectly validly associates every element of the group with a set permutation, it is not true that the composition law that you have here will be the same as the composition law that you'd get if you uh, defined it through the composition of the set permutations that you've just attached to the symbols, i.e. the answer here would not equal the same answer as you'd get from composing the two set permutations associated with A and B together. Okay, so uh, right multiplication isn't uh, useful basically, left multiplication is the one that we're going to use. Okay, right, so to conclude then, uh, this is Cayley's theorem, that you can always think of uh, the elements of a group as representing the set permutations of the set of symbols that is the set of the group itself. Okay, and the way that you can define the set permutations that you want to be associated with every single element is quite simply by defining the set permutation associated with A to carry any element of this set to that element left multiplied by A, basically. So left multiplication is the useful one, not right multiplication. Okay, and when you do that, then the composition law really does equal the same composition law that you get if you defined composition by composition of these set permutations, basically. So it's all fantastic. Right, okay, so uh, that now concludes our discussion of Cayley's theorem.